Greetings and welcome back. The word for today is rive. Rive, to split or crack apart violently. This seems way too slow. Let's speed it up a little bit. There we go. That's better. I didn't actually record me printing the bearded axe, which is the head for my axe. This is my wife's. Uh, she wanted something a little more uh, slender, a little easier, a little lighter. Uh, and she also really didn't care for the bearded axe look as much as I did. So anyhow, um, this is a piece of oak that Florence was kind enough to drop in our yard for us. Uh, it was a previously standing tree that, well, it blew over. Um, when it blew over, I was like, hey, I'm going to make my own axe handles out of this. I had no idea how much work went into making your own axe handles. So other than the fact that I'm working with tools that have fiberglass handles and way superior technology on metalworking, the techniques that I use are actually the same techniques that they would have used to rive a tree for making axe handles. Uh, it's the same basic idea. Uh, they would have been a lot more particular about what sections of wood they used, but I'm making props for costumes, so these aren't going to be tools, they aren't going to be weapons, so I used whatever I was able to coax out of these trees. Uh, for the most part, they're pretty straight, uh, they worked out pretty well, uh, and it was fun, it was interesting. Using my incredibly inferior axemanship skills, I got the handles roughly shaped and then used a draw knife to do most of the rest of the work uh, and ended up generating an insane pile of wood chips while I was doing this. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, this is, again, this is the same type of technique. They would have used a better bench. Uh, I was concerned about printing a 3D axe head the same way that a normal real steel or iron axe head would have been. So uh, when I designed them, I left a small section in the middle that was sort of an oval. And what I chose to do was whittle out an area at the top of the axe head where the handle is going to go. That way I knew that I had enough 3D printed material to at least give me something that I wasn't worried about breaking real easily. Um, and the same with the axe handle. I left enough wood there that if, you know, if I accidentally drop this or bash it against something, it's not going to break. Um, I just whittled everything to shape and then went over it with a rasp to give it a rough finished final shape, take it away with splinters and things like that. Um, and then went over it again with a file, um, cut the top off and JB welded the axe heads to the handle and then used super glue to glue the two halves of the axe heads together. I used an entire tube of super glue to make sure that these things weren't going to come apart at all. Uh, just gave everything a really, really good coat, put the two axe halves together, and then clamped them together to let them sit for about five minutes, give the glue time to set up. Next, I used some JB Weld to fill in any of the seams and cracks from my clearly inferiorly designed 3D print. Uh, these are the first thing I ever designed or 3D printed, um, and they had a few little defects. Um, and then just gave everything a good sand to remove the little print marks and print lines and stuff like that. I cleaned the handles off and gave them a coat of stain from a random can of Minwax that I had sitting around the garage. And I taped off the handles and spray painted the head of the axe. I left these incredibly rough. Um, that's pretty much how they would have ended up. They were hammer forged back then. They didn't have the grinding technology, so they wouldn't have been perfectly smooth. Then I measured out and cut six lengths of just a cheap leather lacing that I, that I had. Um, I'm going to use these to wrap the axe heads and handles in leather. They probably wouldn't have really done that, but the show Vikings is full of those type of things, and that's what this is about. So um, I braided a set of three into two separate braids, uh, and this will get wrapped around the axe head and then around the handles, and I'm going to actually fasten these to the handle with a, ser with a series of furniture tacks, the same tacks that I used to um, secure the rawhide to the shield. And this was the first time I had ever actually used Rub and Buff. Um, an amazing product, but yeah, it's really, really messy. 
Um, I started with a base layer of silver and rubbed it in there real good, let it dry, buffed it, and then did the other side. Uh, then I went over it with a coat of the black to hopefully what I was hoping for was A, it would leave the edge ground and silver looking, and then when it was, when it was blacked over, it would be more like the iron look. Took me several applications of the rubber muff to get the right effect, but once I had it done, I started wrapping the leather braids around the head of the axe, and then wrapped them just at intervals around the handles. Um, those furniture tacks are actually kind of difficult to use. Uh, I mess them up occasionally. I went through several of them when I was messing, when messing with the shields, and I had the same problem with the handles, but perseverance. Once I had the braids wrapped around to a length of approximately where I wanted to, uh, I just left them there, tied them off so that they wouldn't go anywhere, uh, and I'm going to wrap them eventually. But I cut a piece of sec a section that I measured to go around the handle of the axe, uh, punched it with lacing punch down the length so that I can sandwich the, or wrap the piece around the handles, and then I'm going to lace it up. Coated it with some Lexol before I dyed it and give it a, keep it a little bit moist. Um, the oil dyes are really, really bad about stripping the, um, the oil and moisture out of the leather. Um, so once I had it Lexol, then I went through and gave it the brown. This is the darkest brown I had. I actually was looking for something a little darker, but it comes out closer to red. Uh, and then gave it a layer of carnauba wax to help protect it and seal it. And then just started lacing the, the piece up. Uh, stuck it in the stitching pony and... Worked my way from the top to the bottom. When I got to the bottom, I tied it off in a manner that remotely looks presentable, I hope. Somebody from the Facebook suggested that I burn runes into the haft of my axe, and I thought it was a great idea. So I printed out a template to give me an idea just to use as a guide, and then wrapped it around the axe, uh, burnt the outline in, and then took the paper off and tried to fill in as best possible uh, the rest of the word so that it was nice and clean and crisp. I went, tried to do this without burning myself, which was actually a little scary with that thing sitting on my lap. I wrapped the handle of my axe in black leather at the bottom uh, and then just used the same crummy brown lace that I have uh, I don't even know where I got it or what I have it for, but when I got to the end, I wrapped it around a couple of times and tied it off, uh, again, hopefully in something somewhat presentable. And application two of Rub and Buff. Uh, started with black this time. Uh, like I said, I've never used this before, so I tried a couple of different techniques just to see what would work. Uh, gave it a good coat of the black, then I went over it with silver. Uh, in a few spots to kind of highlight the edges. Um, the edge in particular would have been ground down, so I wanted it to look nice and shiny and sharp. Uh, and then I gave a few little touch-up highlights in the area around the edges and around the sides, uh, just again, to make it look like it's got a little bit of wear and tear. Let it dry a little bit and then buffed everything with a nice clean cloth to give it some shine and sheen. One of the things that I've tried to do when I'm working on these Viking costumes is learn a little bit more about the techniques and uh, skills they used to make things. Uh, from everything from the shirts to the weapons, uh, they had a very systematic way of doing things. Uh, so systematic, in fact, that for the shield construction, there were even laws on how your shields needed to be constructed. So, anyways... When I'm working on these things, that's one of the things that I try and keep in mind. And any opportunity I get, I try and do things the same way that they would have done them back then, within limitations, of course. Uh, so, again, when I made these, no chainsaws, no power tools, except for the sanders that I used to sand the heads. But the handles, the wooden handles, were all constructed in a very similar fashion to how they would have constructed them way back when. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great weekend.